Thanks for letting me stay on with your crew, Captain. I plan to be a very generous queen to all my friends. I can see we're gonna get along just fine, your high exaltedness. Don't start with that. Risha will do fine. For now. Every captain needs a good first mate. Corso doesn't know what it takes to run a starship. But I do. Considering the light years you've been racking up, I suggest a hyperdrive overhaul and a sublight engine tune-up. Which do you want first? We're always in a hurry. See if you can squeeze some extra thrust from the engines. Consider it done. I'll be indispensable before you know it. Bet you were surprised to see I can hold my own in a fight. I'm pretty good with a blaster. My father taught me to shoot when I was four years old. Sounds like Nock didn't give you much of a childhood. Are you kidding? His lieutenants were terrified of me. They let me do whatever I wanted. Father wanted me self-sufficient as early as possible. Said I'd need it to survive. He was right. I still remember the day he told me he was going to sleep for a while. Said I was on my own. Going to sleep? He must have thought he was dying. Oh no. He always treated me like an adult. I knew what was happening, even if I didn't understand it. I was 11, made my first solo hyperspace jump and flew to Dantooine. Father had a hideout there. Talk about your one band of planets. For a few years, Dantooine's population was doubled thanks to me and Father frozen in carbonite. You talk a lot about Nock, but you've never mentioned your mother. She died when I was young. I don't remember her. Looking back, I should have been miserable. But it was just a big adventure. Speaking of which, we're overdue for some more excitement. What do you say we get back to our latest caper? Sometimes I can't believe you actually got back my crown. Do you know how many spacers died looking for it? Don't take this the wrong way, but when we first met I thought you'd end up like all the others. I'll always beat the odds. You can count on that. Why do you think I stayed with you? I'm hoping some of that luck rubs off. What I'm really saying is, thanks. I wouldn't be where I am without you. You don't have to thank me, Risha. We're not business partners anymore. That's all the more reason to say something. Anyway, didn't mean to slow us down. I'm sure we have plenty to do. I think I figured out why we get along so well, Captain. We're both restless people. It's how we survive. Trouble loves us, and we just keep on moving. Eventually Trouble gets tired of following and gives up. I've attracted some awfully persistent Trouble. Some people are lucky that way. There wasn't nearly enough Trouble growing up on Dantooine. After being a crime lord's daughter, sitting around got dull real quick. I had a big library of hollow recordings from my father, but I could only watch them so many times. You still had a starship. I'm guessing you weren't long for Dantooine. By the time I was 14, I'd had enough. I buried father's carbonite chamber someplace safe and hit the hyperlanes with a new identity. Those were good times. I met Juran and Adila, got mixed up with Beryl Thorne, lived a life of crime. I'm sure Nock was proud of your accomplishments. Actually, he was disappointed I didn't have my own criminal empire. I was having too much fun on my own. I'm starting to enjoy these chats, but I'm feeling restless. Let's go find some trouble. I envy you, Captain. You'll always be free to do as you please. That all changes for me, once I'm a queen. Dubrillion is getting along fine without you. Do what makes you happy. Ruling a planet has its perks. I should at least give it a try. I've studied records about the Draean dynasty. They started from humble beginnings, distinguished themselves as war heroes, officially anyway. In reality, they backstabbed their way to power just like every other ruler. Some were better at it than others. If they'd been able to hold on to power, you'd already be queen. It only takes one bad ruler to topple a dynasty, and my great-grandfather was good at burning bridges. Father had his failings, but he inspired loyalty. Whenever he defeated a rival gangster, he always freed the enemy slaves. He gave them a choice. Join him or take their chances elsewhere. No recriminations for anyone who left. The rest became family. 
Interesting way to recruit new talent. How many slaves actually signed on? Those people had a lot of anger issues. Most were excited to have a job that let them express it. There was this one little Twi'lek girl who joined us. Best thief I ever met. Got into all sorts of trouble together. We were like sisters, but when Father's organization collapsed, we got separated. I never found out what happened to her. Never too late to find her. If she's as good a thief as you say, she might come in handy. That was a long time ago. Sometimes it's better to leave the past alone. You're really bringing out my chatty side today. That usually means I need to get some exercise. Let's find something more exciting to do than stand around. I'm reviewing the hollow vids of Debrillion. Beautiful planet. Amazing oceans and forests. One of these days I'll have to see it in person. How can you be sure the planet's even worth ruling? For all you know, it smells like a wet bantha. I hire Bothan spies to pose as tourists and record everything for me. Even the smells. Father warned me to stay away from that planet before he went into hibernation. The spaceport has genetic scanners keyed to the Draen bloodline. The King's doing everything in his power to keep me away. I'm not taking over without inside help. Until then, I have the Holovids. If I'm going to take over Debrillion, I can't keep looking for allies in the same old places. The scum of the galaxy isn't as useful when you're stealing a throne. I need a better class of accomplices. You can't steal anything big without some corrupt officials on your payroll. There are some interesting rumors out of Debrillion. Turns out the aristocracy is unhappy with the king. Some nobles are secretly rebelling. Hating the king is one thing. Putting you on the throne is something else. The point is, the planet's politics are ripe for change. All I have to do is personify that. Dubrillian is turning into another Alderaan. A new queen could prevent that, assuming she had the aristocracy's support. But that means taking this game to a new level. You up for that? I've dealt with huts. A bunch of prancing nobles doesn't scare me. What if we have to prance with them? Do you even own prancing shoes? I've put out feelers to some key Dubrillian nobles. When one of them bites, be ready to pounce. In the meantime, we have plenty of other business to keep us occupied. My search for allies in Dubrillian's aristocracy has been interesting. Got an offer from a lesser baron. What a piece of work. Guy must think I'm an idiot. Took two minutes to verify he's a spy for the king. He was baiting me into a trap. Glad you caught Wise before it went any further. I'm in no mood for another Tatooine. Luck on the bright side. At this rate, the king will run out of assassins within the year. I sent the spy a phony meeting request from Nar Shada. He's sending friends to help me. They're in for a surprise. Couple of huts owe me a favor. They promised to record the whole thing. I'll send the king a copy. Never thought I'd say this, but you're my favorite partner in crime. You make beating the odds look easy, Captain. The secret is always fighting people who are dumber than me. That appears to be most of the galaxy. Never realized you were a genius. I've definitely learned a few dirty tricks from watching you work. Think I might have found a few of my own. We'll find out at our next death-defying showdown. I can't wait. You probably think I'm chasing Debrillian's throne to get rich, don't you? Credits are just a means to an end. You must want all that money for something. I've seen what bad leadership does to a place. Aldrin, Nar Shada, even Coruscant. They all suffer because of who's in power. I'm not looking to plunder Debrillian. I want to make it better, run their society the right way. I knew that mercenary attitude was a lie. You're a bleeding heart do-gooder. Admit it. Don't be ridiculous. I'm talking about political survival. Every successful leader has the same strength. They're perceived as generous by their subjects. Give the people just enough of what they want, and they'll leave you alone. That's something the King of Dubrillion doesn't understand. For a second, I thought I was seeing a whole new side of you. False alarm. I'm just saying what everyone else is thinking. Nothing wrong with that. 
I can make this work. It's all about negotiation, and I'm good at that. I'm just thinking out loud now. We should get back to business. The longer I spend here, the more it feels like home. I'm even starting to appreciate Corso. Must be coming down or something. Promise me you'll visit often when I'm Queen of Debrillion. I'll visit so often you'll have to build an extra wing onto the palace. Why not? How about a private landing pad to go with it? It'd be nice to sneak away with you for the occasional break. Go someplace dangerous. Steal something expensive. Mock the bad guys. When you think about it, being queen of a planet provides the perfect alibi. We should take advantage of that. Guess who found a potential accomplice in the Debrillian aristocracy? Feast your eyes on this hollow embossed, genuine flimsiplast invitation. See that fancy arabesque lettering? Hand drawn, in ink, classy. Count Merit Rinald requests the favor of your presence at a discreet location in the Galactic Senate Tower on Coruscant at a time of your choosing. Does that invitation say why Baron Fancy Pants needs a face to face? Why can't he talk to you by hollow? Nobles are like gangsters. They won't crew with someone they've never met in person. Count Reneld is one of the most popular nobles on Dubrillion. He's also secretly organizing a rebellion against the king. His invitation is addressed to Risha Drayan, royal heir to the Drayan dynasty. He's taking me very seriously. I didn't think you were broadcasting your true identity. I had no choice. Risha from Nar Shada doesn't carry the same weight as Risha the future queen. I'm contacting him by Hollow to arrange our meeting. Wanted you here to help me get a read on him. Opening a channel. Whoa. This is a tremendous moment, your royal heiress. I grew up hearing tales of the Draen dynasty. The great battles your ancestors fought. I never believed I'd meet a member of that proud bloodline in person. You have my deepest sympathies for your family's exile. Risha wants back into Debrillian politics. You can make that happen, right? You must be the starship captain who recovered the crown of Debrillian. My world is in your debt. The king wants that crown, and my head. He won't be happy if he finds out we're talking. The man has lost all reason. He must be removed from power, but in a way that spares our world a bloody civil war. I believe the common people and aristocracy alike would embrace the Draen dynasty heir, especially if she wears the crown of Dobrillion. Nothing is ever that easy. Skip to the part where our lives get complicated. It will not be enough to dethrone the king. He must be replaced by someone the people view as one of their own. Right now, you are an outsider. The only way to change that is to marry someone from the existing aristocracy. Get married? To who? Well, <clears throat> the only available suitor is... <sighs> Great stars, this is awkward. I am offering myself in marriage to you. Marrying Risha would make you king, wouldn't it? How convenient. The royal heiress would hold primacy of power. I would be her subordinate in all matters. I understand my proposal is abrupt, but I wished to make my intentions clear and not waste your valuable time. I certainly don't expect an immediate response. All I ask is that you consider this for the good of the brilliant. That'll be easier to do once we've met in person. I'm on my way to Coruscant. See you there, Count. Well, that wasn't awkward at all. That was the worst blind date ever. You've known this guy all of two minutes and he proposes marriage? Crazy. This isn't romance, it's just politics. Under the circumstances, I should probably take this meeting alone. Be back soon, Captain. Never talked to a complete stranger for that long before. Count Reneld gives to charities, builds orphanages, creates wildlife preserves. And those are just his hobbies. You ever consider we've been wasting our lives? 
I do everything for one reason, to get rich. It's straightforward, easy to remember, and works amazingly well most of the time. Ah, the simple life. Anyway, I left the negotiations open. I told the Count I needed time to think about his proposal. That'll give me a chance to run a deep background check. If this guy is as good as he seems, he just might help me overthrow the King without getting married. Count Renald is a man of his word. He sends me daily updates about his rebellion's progress. Incredibly sweet, beautifully written updates. I knew taking De Brillian's throne would be a challenge, but this is getting complicated. Merits every bit the man he appears to be. Even the dirt I've dug up on him turned out clean. It's Merit now, huh? Sounds like you two are getting downright chummy. He keeps insisting I not refer to him so formally. It's cute. Nothing about this guy triggers warning bells. When it comes to husbands, I could do a lot worse. I'll stop bothering you. I needed to talk, and you're the only person who understands me. I'm always here if you need me. I'm sure there's trouble somewhere with our name on it. What do you say we go take all its credits? I was prepared for almost anything if it meant becoming queen. Foiling assassination attempts, fighting wars, bunking on this ship for years. Just kidding. Marrying the Count was never part of the plan. Can I really do that? I'm trying to think of what I wouldn't do to become rich and powerful. Nope. I got nothing. I've seen how your eyes wander every time we land on a new planet. You might get married, but could you stay that way? Ugh. I hadn't even thought about producing heirs. Not that he wouldn't be a great... father. This conversation's officially given me a headache. Let's go do something outrageous. Things on Debrillian have taken a turn. The Kings put a death mark on Count Renald's head. When the citizens heard that, they rebelled. The King imposed martial law to stop the rioting. But that got the aristocracy riled up. The whole planet's going to war. Sounds like the Count's plan to avoid bloodshed by marrying you just went up in flames. We were never going to unseat the King without a fight. I just hope we'd pick the time and place. Needless to say, the Count has his hands full just staying alive. But even with all that's happened, he still wants to marry me. I can't keep putting him off. Any advice how I should play this? Forget about the politics for a second. Do you love this guy or not? I barely know him. This isn't about love. I need to figure out what's best for my long-term plans. Oh, perfect. Time's up. That's him calling on the Hollow. Alright. Let's do this. Merit, I'm glad you're safe. From what I hear, the fighting got worse after you escaped. I cannot spare De Brilliant from war. But perhaps we can still create a better future together. I realize forging a true relationship takes time, and our marriage won't be consummated for some time, but I am hopeful. My proposal stands, dear Risha. Will you marry me? Say yes. Hurry before you lose your nerve. Yes, I'll marry you. We'll make it official the old-fashioned way. Have your people bring me a written contract to sign. But let's not make it easy for the King to kill us. Until the war's over, we shouldn't meet in person. Agreed? I will continue to send you updates as I'm able. Dubrillion will be free. Farewell, my lovely wife. May the stars watch over you. Isn't he adorable? You make an adorable couple. I hope you're not expecting a gift on this short notice. You can owe us. I should probably do something to celebrate. Wanna go steal something really expensive? I've been getting reports on the war for Debrillion. It's dragging into a stalemate. Nobody has a clear advantage yet. I want to get more involved with the war effort, but my allies tell me the best thing I can be is a symbol. What are you supposed to represent? I don't know. Some nonsense about new hope. The minute I open my mouth and start talking politics, I risk losing support. I can't afford that right now. Guess I'm stuck on the sidelines until it's over. At least I have company.
I've been thinking about the future a lot lately, and I had a funny realization. Every scenario I see, you're in it. I've never let myself get close to anyone. Not even my friends from the old days. Count Reneld may be my husband, but you are my family. Does that make me part of your noble bloodline? Will I have to learn that crazy de Brillian accent? Don't worry about it. My first edict as queen will be to teach everyone on the planet how to speak proper basic. I don't know what the future holds for us, but I promise to always be there. Not just for you, but everyone you care about. That's as mushy as I'm getting. Back to finding trouble. <laughs>